They say that if you watch this video, you'll probably be cursed in a week's time. Hey everybody, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom. Gio here, and today we're taking a look at Sadako at the End of the World. I have it here on my tablet, not physically, but nonetheless, it's a great, quirky little series that I really enjoyed reading. What exactly are we talking about? Well, this is published by Yen Press, and it's a story written and drawn by Kota Natsumi, and it is the story of Sadako traveling with two young girls in a world where humanity is destroyed. So real quick, when I start talking about this book, the first thing that comes to mind is probably Sadako. You're thinking, I've seen this character before. You're right, you have. It is the same Sadako from the Ringu franchise, or as we call it stateside, the Ring. So yes, that Sadako. At the beginning of the story, we are in this post-apocalyptic world. We follow two young girls as they are scavenging uh, through this broken house, and they find the infamous tape, and it actually works. <laughs> you know, this haunted, famous, cursed VHS tape, and Sadako appears to curse them. And, you know, a week's time, they will meet a grisly end, and all that stuff. But the girls don't really care because they're just happy to see somebody for the first time in a long time. The relationship that actually forms from this trio is the heart and soul of the book. It is such a wholesome, uh, quirky juxtaposition of having this horror franchise in this cute setting, although there are some really dark overtones because, you know, it's a post-apocalyptic Earth. A lot of people are dead. We don't really know as we're reading the story if there are more uh, humans around. We're just following these two cute girls trying to survive. We don't know what happened to their family or what happened overall. There's this air of mystery which I appreciate because usually great scary stories are like that where you don't have all the details. It's the unknown that really pushes the fear forward and makes it an excellent read or whether it be a movie or a book or whatever it is, it makes it for an engaging read. And same with this. Even though it's not a scary book, it's more uh, wholesome and cute in a creepy sort of way, we still don't know what happens, and that uncertainty makes it for a fascinating journey and a fascinating read. Obviously, the dynamic between the three characters, there's not a whole lot by the way, there's not a whole lot of plot. It's only like five chapters, if I remember correctly. And eventually the girls, they may end up meeting other humans around. So you're probably wondering, how are they surviving? What's their story and their interaction with Sadako? It, obviously, the humor comes from how the character can't speak. So the girls fix up this tablet so she's able to... Uh, express her feelings or just tell everybody how she's doing or what she's doing or what she wants to do. So that is a great source of humor in this story. The art in Sadako at the end of the world is great in my opinion. It's a very light and soothing art style where you just have um, sort of this sketchy portrayal of these characters and you, don't, you aren't seeing the harsh reality of a torn down world because you're seeing it mostly through the eyes of these two young girls so it's very uh, light and peaceful in its representation of a chaotic post-apocalyptic earth i guess what i liked most about this book is the fact that the girls even though they realize how crappy the world is um, they still keep moving forward and it doesn't you know, the, the surroundings don't dictate how they're going to feel or what they're going to do, and they're just looking for the next adventure. And even if it's finding this uh, terrible character that brings about despair and death to people, uh, they don't care. They're just happy and excited to see her and treat her with kindness and love uh, because it's another big sister, if you will. And I think if people adopted that mentality and just... Uh, were a little bit more friendly with each other, I think the world might be a little bit of a better place. I do like that the girls, uh, they don't, they're oblivious and naive to what's happening, and Sadako at one point writes in her tablet, <laughs> you know, she's here to curse you, but 
She also realizes that these girls are nice and innocent, and she wishes them a good night, even though the girls are already asleep. So it's a sweet, tender moment that you would not think would be possible by mishmashing a uh, scary character like Sadako in a cutesy post-apocalyptic world in this that is this book. <laughs> The final scene of the book is probably one of my favorite things about it. Um, yeah, the whole book is sweet and all that stuff, but what they do at the end uh, was really, really clever. I loved it so much. And uh, if, if you do check this out, uh, let me know what you thought at the end, because I thought it was pretty uh, ingenious. The book, like I said, is a fairly short read, but it still has a lot of fun with its source material, paying homage to uh, this beloved horror character of Sadako and all her quirks and characteristics and all the uh, stuff that you know from the Ringu franchise. There are a lot of Easter eggs towards that. And even if you've never seen that stuff and you don't know about it, you can still enjoy it. And you know the overall plot of the ring, you know, a cursed evil spirit with a videotape, all that stuff. But it's sort of a parody of that and taking it a step further and creating something unique with it that I really appreciate it. The, like I said, the art is great and the characters are really wholesome and nice and the ending, the ending was unexpected, although in hindsight I probably should have seen it coming, but it was quite, um, quite the bittersweet ending that I really enjoyed. There is another manga that is coming out this year, 2021, called Sadako-san and Sadako-chan, which is a little bit different. It's uh, drawn by a different artist. Of course, both are supervised by the original creator and author of the Ring novel, uh, Koji Suzuki, so that's always great. He had some say in the creation of this, and uh, I thought it paid a great homage to a uh, beloved horror franchise while still bringing something new, unique, and sweet to the table. Art is great, story is really wholesome, Give it a shot if this is up your alley. Have you read this story? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you haven't, let me know what are some of your favorite horror characters in manga or film or whatever it may be that you wish would get a quirky spin-off or one-shot or a reimagining, if you will. Guys, as always, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. It really does mean a whole lot. Thank you so much for all the support. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos pop up as well. I've got to go, everybody. Thank you so much. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will see you on the next video.